scared to go to school. That's what kids in Philadelphia are saying amid an increase in deadly gun violence across the city. One high school principal says nine kids at his school were shot to death within the last year. But America's crime crisis not stopping there. Chicago, the search is underway for two shoplifters seen brazenly taking thousands of dollars worth of merchandise from a store in broad daylight. The second time the store was hit in three weeks. And in San Francisco, more than 150 families are hiring private security, saying they don't feel safe in their own neighborhood following repeated instances of home burglaries and car break-ins. We'll hear now Howard Safer, former New York City Police Commissioner. Howard, thanks for being with me today. So many terrible stories that we lead this with, but there's one thread running through all of them. And that is we are no longer prosecuting the crimes that lead to the kinds of things we're seeing now. Your thoughts on that? Well, we're going in exactly the wrong direction. What's happening is prosecutors are putting these limits on who they're going to prosecute for theft, which is an invitation to criminals. You know, in the late 90s and through 2010, crime and violence was going down because we were aggressively pursuing criminals. And the message that was being sent was that if you commit a crime, you're going to get arrested and go to jail. The message that is now being sent in San Francisco and Chicago, Portland, Seattle, is you can commit any crime you want, and we're not going to send you to jail, and we're going to defund the police, and the police are brutal and uh, racist. And that's the absolute wrong message. This is a message of permissiveness that we need to turn around. What reduced crime to the lowest levels in a century mm. was sending the message that you commit a small crime, you're going to be arrested because you're probably committing a big crime as well. And, and instead, what you're seeing is this really perverse situation. A guy living in a big city where you have families in San Francisco and, you know, they can afford this, which is great for them, but they're hiring private security. Obviously, most people in big cities cannot do that. They cannot hire private security. And what gets me, Howard, is it, it, what it feels like is these families should be pushing for policies that work for everybody, but instead, many of them simply insulate themselves and they stick with the same progressive party line. How do you get change in these cities when so many people in positions of authority can simply insulate themselves? Well, what, you're going to get change when people get fed up, when people become victims of crime, and that's what's happening. And, of course, unfortunately, most of the victims of crimes are minorities in underserved neighborhoods. But, you know, it's like what happened in New York in 1994. Uh, one of the tabloids had this big headline, Dave, do something. And then they changed parties in New York because mm. they just couldn't take it anymore. Mm. And that's what has to happen now. We are absolutely going down the rabbit hole with crime reduction by looking to defund police mm. and by sending a message to a criminal that if you steal $999 worth of goods, we're not going to prosecute you. So I don't, I, yeah. I don't doubt that they're going into stores in uh, daylight. It's a ridiculous, stupid way mm. uh, to govern. Howard, really quickly, what do you make of this uh, protest in New York City? You've got municipal workers coming out against the city's vaccine mandate. They, of course, have to get their first dose by 5 p.m. or be on Friday or be pay, put on unpaid leave. This strikes me as exactly the wrong policy to have in a moment of rising crime like this. Very briefly, Howard, your thoughts on that? Absolutely. More, more police officers are dying of COVID than from gunfire. And their interaction with the public should require them not to be transmitters of this disease. I believe everybody should be required to be vaccinated to protect not only themselves, but the public that they deal with. But, but again, in this moment, uh, when you put that mandate on these, uh, these frontline workers who have given so much, you know, their response is, wait a second, can I make that decision for myself? Isn't the priority here to keep New York City safe? Howard, you know, we've been talking about that's the issue, safety. I appreciate your perspective on this today. Thanks for joining us, sir. Good to be with you. All right.